Welcome everyone to the September 5th member Escribiente meeting. We're very lucky today to have Mikhail Summers. She'll be working with us on Blind Contour Alphabet Book. All right, Elizabeth, over to you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Elizabeth McKee. I'm the program coordinator for this year. I am really pleased to introduce our presenter for tonight, who is my friend Mikhail Summers. Mikhail is a high school art teacher at the Albuquerque Academy. And she's also a mother and a calligrapher and a book artist and probably a whole bunch of other things. And she's going to lead us through blind contour drawing as if we were her high school students. Over to you, Mikkel. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Actually, you inspired this program, but maybe you don't know that. You inspired me. It sort of went back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And, and I actually, I do this every day in front of lots and lots of teenagers, but I am more nervous now than ever. <laughs> so. Let's see. I want to first talk about blind contour drawing, and maybe many of you have done that before. Um, it's Nicolaides, if you have seen his book, The Natural Way to Draw. It's blind contour drawing is part of the first 20 pages of his book, and it's how we start our foundation in art classes, too. So probably you've You've done it before, maybe you've heard about it, but how would you do that with calligraphy? That's, that's the question that we're gonna answer tonight or we're gonna explore anyway. So let me share my screen. This is uh, a sample. This is uh, the book that I made for this program tonight. And let's see if I can get it to go. So this is just one of the artists that I show my students and you can find her on the internet. She's been making blind contour portraits for years and years and years. And she has books and books and books filled with blind contour drawings. And it's just so much fun. I, I think this is a, just a really freeing process. You don't look at the paper when you draw. So you look at the subject. And really the idea is to train your eye-hand coordination and for you to get to, to know the subject better, to really explore the subject and see the subject. And honestly, when we teach our sixth graders blind contour drawing, they nail it. They, they do amazing work. It's incredible. And then we take our eighth graders and we also do blind contour drawing and they fumble all over the place. And developmentally, that's, that's what happens. They want to be perfect. They want to have it just right. And they're getting abstract in their brain. They're thinking abstractly. And they think about what should this look like rather than what the thing does look like. So we're really retraining ourselves to be open to what we're seeing in front of us and connecting our eye with our hand. And so when people do this, it's very difficult to actually talk and draw at the same time because if you're talking that's the abstract verbal part of your brain and uh, it i lose words when i do this so i probably won't talk when when we actually are getting going and so uh, pardon me <laughs> maybe we can take questions at the end or a little bit later in between so i explored a little bit how do people do blind contour drawing and with calligraphy or with type? And this is the only example I found. And maybe you all know of some other examples, but I apologize. I don't know how to say Bill's last name, but he made this uh, display font. And I think it's so cool. Blind Clarendon. I um, just wanted to share that with you. And my students helped me out today. And they... <laughs> because this is the first part of the program. So I had them fingerspell blind contour. And a long time ago, I used to be an interpreter for the deaf. Um, my sister is deaf. So I, I know fingerspelling. I know, I remember a little bit ASL. 
I thought, how can we do this? Most people, when they learn to do blind contour drawing, they draw faces or hands. And I thought, well, hands, finger spelling, calligraphy makes sense to me. So guess what we're going to do? At least to start. OK, so here are uh, not all the letters. Not all the letters did not work. Um, the way that I was trying to pose myself in front of my camera. So A, B, C, D, E is on the top row. F, G, H, I, K. J is a tricky letter in fingerspelling as well as in most um, typefaces, in most uh, letter forms. So yay for J. <laughs> and we have L-M-N-O-P. I left out the Q because I didn't like the photo. R-S-T-U-V. OK, and then W-X-Y. Z is one of those tricky ones, too. I think that it would be easiest to just go to the first page. And I'm going to share my desktop now. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll share that page. And you can look at the letters when we're drawing, but I just want to do a little demo and show you an example. So this summer, Elizabeth said, will you do this program? I'm like, OK. And so I decided to make a COVID blind contour book. And um, actually, I made that in your class, Elizabeth. <laughs> and I filled it up now. So I probably cheated on this one, I have to say. It looks too good. <laughs> but, Every day, I just did a different um, contour drawing, blind contour drawing. And I labeled it because sometimes you can't tell really what it is. So there's an orchid. Uh, there's a COVID portrait. So yeah, I didn't cheat on that one, you can tell. <laughs> Hand sanitizer. Bananas. You get the idea. So let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to just do a demo. And then we can look later. We can look at my, my slideshow with my finger spelling. And you guys can all practice. So hopefully you have a couple sheets of paper, because we're going to use at least two. And the first thing, I have these markers. They're Stabilo markers. And this is size 68. There's two sizes that I generally have used, 68 and 88. 88, I think this is the 88 one. Uh, they're pretty small tip. And then the 68 are a little bit chunkier. So that's kind of nice. But you can use any marker that you have, anything that you have laying around. Don't use a pencil. You could use a brush with ink. You could use, this is a lot of fun, use one of these needle tip bottles with a Sumi ink or your favorite ink. That would be fine too. Um, the reason that I don't have people use a pencil is because I don't want you to erase. I don't want you to, it, there's no mistakes. Everything goes, it's all good. We want to use um, lines that are confident, lines that are fluid, lines that are continuous, and lines that are specific. So we're really looking at the details. So I'm going to just put my hand out there. And I'm going to use this marker here. It's kind of, I, <laughs> I will be cheating because I can see myself in the Zoom screen. But I'll try not to look. <laughs> so let's see, there's the letter A. And I'm just going to look at my hand. I'm going to start. Let me talk about how we do this. Because that's, I think understanding the process is so important. And there's some really great videos out there online. I'm flattered that I was asked to do this because those videos are awesome. So you, what you want to do, the contour is the outline of a shape. But that doesn't mean that we're going to stick with just the outside. And when Nicolaides talks about learning to see and connect it to your hand, 
he talks about really noticing the object. When you go to, to the store and you want to buy some shoes or some clothes or something, you pick them up and you touch them and you see, you know, how does this feel? And so when you're seeing something, you want to touch it with your eyes. You want to follow along, pretend you're a little ant, not a fast ant, a slow ant. And so you're going to start at one spot and you're going to pretend that you're literally touching that shape, touch that shape with the edge of your pencil. And you just go along that edge, that contour, and maybe you get to a point where you are still at the outside, but there's some inside information. And so you bring your pencil to the inside and then you can come back out and maybe you go back over that or maybe you just skip it. It's okay. Right. And then you can keep following along and get those little creases that we have that eighth graders don't have and just keep following along. And the trick is to go at the same speed. Don't cheat and say, oh, there's a straight line and zip up the straight line. Mm -mm. The ant can only go at one speed. And so you are only drawing at one speed. If you can't touch it, you can't draw it. So you have to really follow along. And don't cheat and look at your paper. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no cheating. So I'll just do this and then you guys can all do one. So I'm, I'm, one thing I'm going to do is orient my paper. Which way do I want it? And my, my hand is more vertical, so I'll put my paper vertical. Maybe I'll even tape it down so that it doesn't move. And I want to kind of get a feel for how big is my paper. I can kind of get a, uh, move my arm around and see how big is this paper. And so I've, I haven't done this live in front of non eighth graders before, so we'll see how this goes. So I'm, I'm starting down here kind of at where my watch is. And my angle is a little bit different than yours, but Okay, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I could keep going. I think I need a manicure. Okay, so I missed some fingers there. That's okay. It's all about seeing and noticing the subject. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to do this with with calligraphy is that one of the things I've learned from the different workshops I've taken is noticing that slope, noticing a slant, noticing the negative space, noticing that this height of something relative to something else is so important. 
And so I'm going to uh, put my screen back over here with a few of the letters. And I think that if um, maybe Heather, you can help me see how people are doing. But let's take maybe about four to five minutes at the most and pick a letter and I can show you some of the other letters later, but let's uh, pick one of these letters and start to draw it on a paper. Mikhail, we have a question from the chat. I hope you can hope you can answer this. Uh, Stephanie's curious. Can you can you should you pick up the marker or keep it as one continuous line? That is a great question, and really, there there's no rules. I pr I teach my students. I prefer to keep it as one continuous line. I think that it feels more rhythmic and more fluid and confident that way. But not everybody does that. Great, thank you. Heather, can you tell our people cheating? <laughs> well, some people were just watching you, I think, um, but I don't think people are cheating. Um, the people might be looking, they might be looking down at their own hands too. I, w I know I was looking down at my own hand. <laughs> but I think they'll know if they've been cheating. <laughs> Are we ready to move on? Yeah, let's keep moving. Okay. I would be glad to demonstrate any of these letters if you need to. I do have a little video for the J's out there and the Z's because those are not stationary letters. Those move. And so I'll see, and I don't know if it will play. It does not play. So I'll demonstrate it. When, when you fingerspell it, you might have noticed if you know any finger spelling that the letters that I presented might look a little different because you might see a C that looks sideways. And that's just to show you the curve. But when you see it, when somebody is spelling something, they are facing you. And so that's the, the way that I presented the letters. With a J, a J is a moving letter. It's, it's um, time-based. So you start out like an I and you pull it around. So a J. And a Z, you start out just with your index finger and you draw a Z in the air. So you just draw it in the air. And they're not, I don't know what you would call them in calligraphy. They're not ligatures. Maybe they're ligatures, but there's double letters. So if you are saying, I'm going to have pizza for dinner, which I am some, <laughs> at some point, <laughs> two Zs, you would just do two fingers and draw it in the air. 
and and if you do a double L, you just move it slightly, and just a little bit L L, or E E, you just move it sideways just a little bit. So there's there's some cool conventions. So I want to do some words now, and I did these in Heather's class this summer. These are some Neuland words that I did to actually to help demonstrate video workshop that, uh, that I was doing. And so I thought we would begin with begin, and I did a little begin. And so what we're going to do is literally trace. Now, these are not perfect Neuland, okay, but you're not going to get perfect outcome either. So we're going to go with it, go with the flow. And so you can pick one of these, one of these words if you want to look at the look at my screen and pick one of these words what I would do is just orient your paper and kind of get a feel for how big your paper is start out with one place on the letter and as you draw yes keep it continuous Go slow. Now that S is almost touching the L, so I'm, I'm just going to go with that. And I'm going to go over the top of the L, come down. And I'm going to cut over to that O. And I can't see the rest of it, so. So does that make sense? OK. Let's pick a word and you can try one of the words. Heather is asking if you omit the counters or add them later. And I usually omit them, but you can totally just jog over, do a little counter, jog back out. It's totally up to you. It's what your eye is noticing, what you want to do. I didn't, because you're all muted, I didn't hear you laughing at your drawings because that's usually what happens when the eighth graders will be drawing each other or they're drawing their hands and then they look and then they burst out laughing or they go, oh no. So, but, uh, so it sounds like you're all satisfied with your drawings and I'm very glad. We're gonna move on to the alphabet. I'm gonna use a, uh, the Stabilo marker because uh, we're gonna add a little surprise to it later. This is actually the, the image that, this was done with ink, actually done with ink and a little bottle. And that is a really fun way to do this. But with the Stabilo, these are water soluble. So that will add a, a layer of fun. Elizabeth said I could use her exemplar and I traced it. So thank you, Elizabeth. So. What I did here is I thought it would be fun to squish all the letters together, um, both the interlinear space and the letter spacing, because then you get so much, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but you get so much interesting shapes out of this. And you can start to notice where the C, the top of the C, is not as, doesn't come out as far as the bottom of the C. And so that's the kind of stuff you can start to notice from doing this blind contour with letters. And so what I would suggest is that you go around the outside. I drew with a little bit of a fat marker so that you could go along the outside of the letters and just follow along. And here's one, one thing I want to show my, my um, table here for a minute. I would orient the paper horizontally, even though the letters go like this, I would orient it horizontally because we're gonna make a book out of this in the end. And so what I would do is start out in the middle and do draw your letters down here and then down here, and then you can flip it over and do your letters here and here. And that way, when we fold up the book, the letters will be, if you can read them, they'll be oriented correctly. 
you you don't have to do it that way you could just do it any which way you want and i've even done it kind of like heather showed us last week or last month with palimpsest and just do it if i don't like the first one just keep drawing over it and <laughs> keep going so there are no rules other than looking there is something called modified blind contour drawing and that is when you get to a point where you get stuck and you come to the end of something, then you can uh, pick up your pen, look, reorient it, and keep, continue drawing. The eighth graders take a little too much advantage of that, but you guys can know about that if you get stuck. So let's go. And I think this should take us a little while, then maybe, maybe 10 minutes or so. Remember to kind of figure out how big your paper is. Find your tape.
Mikhail, we have a question in the chat. Stephanie's wondering, how do you not go right off the page? Do you put part of your hand down to guide you? Um, you could do that, but if you see my page, I don't know if you can see my page, but I totally go off the page. And <laughs> that's why some, it's good to have something on your table to protect it. But yeah, I went right off the page and sometimes you can feel it and you can just bring yourself back and you can, if you see what I'm doing, it doesn't look anything like alphabets. I, I didn't really warm up today. And so I feel like the more you do this, the, the more warmed up you get, the better your proportion gets. And I noticed that when I'm drawing, um, I'm not doing what I'm, what I'm telling you, I'm kind of like skidding along and along the line and saying, oh, well, I want to be up there and I don't follow the line. And so you really have to be patient and practice and it's slow. And Nicolaides book, he talks about a five hour contour and we don't have time for that tonight. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, m most of the time, uh, 10 minutes, five minutes just to uh, warm up and practice. And yeah, you do go off the page and it's okay because it's, it's really about the process and not the product. Are people ready to move on? Okay. So I had Neuland ready for you guys to do too. So, nice. I mean, you could just use any exemplar and do this. It would be so much fun. So there's my page and what I, what I did I don't know if you guys have a water bottle handy. So because these markers are uh, water soluble, the kids love this part too. Uh, you can just spray it and it starts to, I don't know if you can see it, start to dissolve. I'm just going to give it a couple. There we go. Give it a little couple squirts and you can also put water on it before you draw and get that kind of effect with the Stabilo markers. So that's kind of fun. And then um, if you have paints or pastels or colored pencils, you can go and color in. Ooh, which color do I want to use? Um, I think it, this needs a blue. And so it's still a little wet. I probably would wait for this to dry, but um, you can just look for the negative spaces that you want to add color to. And these are water soluble colored pencils too. So it's doing some interesting stuff. Here's one that I did and just added a few little bits. I think it needs a little more, but you can see what you can do with that. Somewhere I have that book. So when this was, I taped it together. But you can uh, just add any kind of colors, paints, pastels, colored pencils, and fill in whatever negative spaces you like um, with colors or just value, different values. So should we, uh, let me get a feel for what people want to do. Do you want a few minutes to keep working and add color? Wet erase markers, bleed, blues and reds when spritz with water. Ooh, nice. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, there's water soluble stuff is so much fun. And I'd probably use, I'd probably think about your colors and use maybe three, about three different colors would be good. I'm just adding color right now. Just um, kind of randomly and I would really want to take a little more time with this, but I want to get some color in there and I want to show you one more thing before Elizabeth kicks me off. Mm. 
I think everyone would hate me if I kicked you off. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what you guys did. This is one of my favorite things that we do. I'm actually liking how this colors are mixing even with the when it's wet and I'm adding more colors than three because it's too much fun. Yes, we're going to definitely fold the book, Stephanie. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm going to do next. And so I'll quickly show you the book. It's the easiest book in the whole world, pretty much. Um, and yes, Vicky, Vicky says it looks a lot better folded into a book shape. Yes. <laughs> well, we're going to take this and make it look like a book. One place to find directions for bookmaking that I love is Booklin. And they have a whole education section and they talk about all different ways to uh, make various kind of books, including one sheet books. So what you, all you need to do is you can fold it either way, just fold it in half the long way, hot dog style. And if you have a bone folder, then you can use that. I probably would do it on the other side because of the colors and you're gonna open it up fold it in half hamburger style the other way and if i'm going too fast let me know i can do it again open it up and take those ends the sides and bring them into the middle So basically you have eight little sections and what you're going to do is um, I'm just going to fold that in half hamburger style. We're going to cut right there just this uh, right here to this corner. So. I have to say I haven't heard anybody say hamburger style and hot dog style since I was in school. <laughs> That's great. Well, it works. <laughs> it does. So, and maybe I didn't go too far enough there. Open it back up and you and fold it in half the hot dog way and then squish it into the middle. And you have a book. Press it all down and decide which way is the front. And you have a little book. And you can double stick tape or glue edges together that if they are annoying you. Or you could do the other side and make it a secret. You can have some secret message inside. So it's your example book made that way? Yes. yes. Oh, it's just a bigger sheet of paper. Yeah, yeah, bigger sheet of paper. And I was practicing more with my letters. You can almost read them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and then I glued, I think I double stick taped the ends on this so it doesn't open up that much. But it would be fun to do a little something on the inside. Yeah. yeah. And somebody just came home, so my dogs are going to bark again. But so thank you for listening, and I would love to see what you guys did. Thank you so much. This has been really, really fun.